Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Thursday edition of our Best Bets show here for the NCAA tournament. We are the three-man weave. It's a spinny tournament. It's not just spinny Saturdays. It's a spinny tournament. I'm Jim Root, joined by Matt Cox, Kai McEwen. We're going to be spinning you all the way through this wonderful NCAA tournament. And yes, we're recording the Thursday show here on Tuesday. We'll also record the Friday show on Tuesday because we just want to get you the content. And selfishly, we don't want to do it Thursday and Friday morning when we're out in Vegas. But we think this helps you and it helps us. So it's kind of a, a dual uh, benefit here. Kai, Matt, we've got 16 games on Thursday, 16 games on Friday. We will get through them all. No chat section needed, but we will, of course, interact with the wonderful chat that's that's hopping in there right now. A lot of chatter going on already. Kai, do you have any takeaways or anything you want to get off your chest before we bust into all these games? No, Jim, I, I don't. I, I said my piece on our March Madness Marathon podcast, which you can listen to on all the podcast waves, and also uh, check out our video on YouTube. So all the thoughts on the bracket and everything like that are neatly tucked away in that video. This one's all about the gambling, baby. Yeah, the betting. Woo. Matt, yeah, I'm sure you have some secret insight you've been hiding and waiting to unveil on this particular show. Scheming. No, I'm always scheming, Jim. You know me. But I just want to say up front before we get questions about the NIT, the CBI, the CIT, we are boycotting the NIT in our discussion this year as we have in prior years. And this year of all years, it's important that we stand in solidarity with our mid-majors who have been extra hosed with the NIT, no longer guaranteeing spots to conference champions. Ho-hum, the outrage. Jim, that's all we have. Yeah, I had a friend text me, what do you think of this line for the NIT? And I was like, respectfully, I will place zero wagers on the NIT. <laughs> I might watch some of the games when it's downtime in the NCAA tournament. I did but place a few, Jim. I did place a I'm, few. So hypocrisy and mission. Well, then I, people in the chat, are, the fact that you revealed that, people in the chat are going to want to know exactly what you bet, Matt. So I'll do my people, own side show, Matt's NIT selection <laughs> show. It'll be like good, an hour good. after our, our second. Be, today, be prepared so, to reveal said bets yes uh, all right let's get into it guys and we are going in chronological order this is fun because this is the tip off order you will see on thursday game by game this is how your day is going to develop we'll see if you've got bets early you got bets late excited to go through all that first tip opening day eight nine game michigan state and mississippi state two terrific coaches two msus uh this this number has kind of held steady uh michigan state Right now, a slight favorite in this game because of their predictive rankings. Kai, what are you looking at with this one? Side, total, what jumps out to you from a, from a betting lens? Yeah, we mentioned that Izzo, it is possible that he can lose in March. He's lost six times in the opening round. So put that aside for just a second. I, I go back to preseason rankings. If you're a preseason rankings type of guy that believes that a team will get back to that and, and play to its potential, then you like Michigan State here. Top five in the poll, 13th in Kempom. Very experienced, Tyson Walker, A.J. Hogard, depending on your opinion on him. He is a senior guard. Uh, senior guards in March usually try to lean that way. I do think Sparty's defense, eighth best in the country, is huge in this one. Can they compete on the glass is a big question mark, but they see physical teams every night in the Big Ten. They held up pretty well on them against them on the defensive end. I know they're going to force turnovers. They're going to make it hell on the Mississippi State guards. Mississippi State dead last in the SEC, Matt, in turnover rate. That's not good. And Tyson Walker, I believe in him in March. They're a good shooting team. Sparty minus one and a half is where I'm leaning in this game. I disagree. I'm going to go with Stark Vegas and Chris Chance and the boys. I, a couple of concerns, though, as I looked at this a little closer last night, Jim, like Mississippi State's defensive metrics, the underlying peripheral stuff. I mean, their interior defense was not great in SEC play. Like they were not as dominant at the rim as we kind of perceived them to be. They gave up a ton of high quality looks from the outside. They played pretty shell and compact. For as much as I think we believe them to get out and swarm the ball, which they do at times, they get in gaps, but they do allow a lot of open three. So I think there's avenues where a very well-connected, highly effective execution game plan for Michigan State comes out and just, you know, hangs 70-80 on my uh, my Bulldogs. But I'm going to trust Chris Shans and the historical track record here with the team I've liked more for most of the year, Point, plain and simple. Yeah, I, I don't. I'm also not that worried about the the rim defense against Michigan State. They don't have like the interior threat to pound it inside. To it's a lot of mid range jumpers. They rank tenth in the country in rate of mid range jumpers taken. They're not actually that good at them. They're uh, outside the top two twenty in making them. Tyson Walker strikes me as like this dominant mid range scorer, and, and he kind of is. But Holgard takes a bunch in that range. Malik Hall takes a bunch of like mid range fadeaways over the top in the post. 
They don't have that guy that powers all the way to the rim. The the Tolu Smith pick and roll defense has me concerned, man. I think that's a big part yep. of why their numbers are not that awesome. Some um, chat and, members mentioning that as well. Thank you, Ted and, Spencer. Very sharp. Yes. Yep. Oh wow, I didn't even see that. Same page, Ted. Love love to, love to have that. Um, yeah, I, I just I I'm actually with you though, Matt. I trust Mississippi State. The athleticism I think is really going to bother Michigan Michigan State. Like the Cameron Matthews, DJ Jeffries flying around on some of the guards, like the length that they can throw at him. Uh, I believe in Mississippi State here. I also like the under, Matt, despite your kind of punching holes in the defenses. I think both teams are very good in transition defense, and that's going to keep this game in the half court where it's going to be a little bit of a slog. Like I said, a lot of mid-range jumpers for Michigan State. And despite Josh Hubbard's emergence, the, the Mississippi State offense still isn't like anything to really write home about unless he's mega scorching hot. So I like Mississippi State. I like the under. Uh, Kai, to your point on Izzo losing in the first round six times, he's also only 24-23-1 against the spread since 2005 in the big yep. dance. He's a coin flip. Yeah. Like, There's no don't bet against Tom Izzo in March. You can. Half the time you'll be right. Is this the first time, yeah, first time Jans with Mississippi State in the tournament? Uh, has he won a tournament game in Mexico State? I don't think he ever did. He did. He they beat, beat UConn. He beat UConn. That was Jans, right? Okay. I didn't realize that was Jans. Jans. Yep. Yeah. Okay. 12, and they have one. Okay, and then last year lost like basically on final possession, wide open three against Pitt in the corner, and yeah. didn't knock it down in the yeah, first. Where they four. started off hot from three, they first made like, their first right. three threes, right. and yeah. then they missed their next twenty or so. It was a terrible game, absolutely. Terrible it, it was the game. most fool's gold Four. start you'll ever see to yep. a game where like the worst three point shooting team in the country hits four of the first five, and it was a disaster from then on. All right, next, Duquesne versus BYU. The 512 slash actually 611 matchup here, depending on how you actually want to look at the bracket, this is how it shook out. Matthias it points possibly at a premium. That's typically the case in Duquesne games. They are 9 and 24 on the total this year. 24 unders out of the 34 games. One push in there. Uh, but BYU's offense can really light it up. Very high variance team. Matt, you call Creighton the jump shooting Jays. Should we call them these the jump shooting Cougs? Is that is that something? Yeah, we should it's do actually here? more effective. I think it's more apt of a nickname than the jump shooting Jays this year. And I think that's where Duquesne has some problems matchup wise. Like their entire mantra has been kind of gritty and ugly this year. It's what Dan Brotts had to evolve with. He had some nice bigs emerge. David Dixon's been like a, a pleasant surprise uh, up front. They have some. They have more depth up front than they had last year. I think that's been kind of the bedrock of their defense. Jimmy Clark, Day Day Grant, they have to do everything on the offensive side for Duquesne. If they're not making shots, um, it, it, you're going to have to win ugly. That's why I think the the pathways to success for the Dukes are you know one to two maybe. BYU, so many options. Only concern though, Kai, is BYU doesn't get a lot of easy shots themselves. Like if they go cold, this is a high variance type of team as well. They don't get easy ones in and around the rim. But I just trust their coaching and their surplus of shooting. Um, that that variance swing will be unlikely. So I think BYU prevails here. I just don't think you can win ugly against BYU. I mean, this team is too good offensively. Um, ball movement, shooting's too good. I, I think BYU blasts them. Uh, the Duquesne Dukes haven't seen an offense like this all season. Too many weapons. Their their offense, yeah, it's Grant and, and uh, Clark. They take horrible shots and they're undisciplined. They 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 do not value possessions. They're careless. Uh, I, I like their guards. I like Dan Bro Dan Brat. Excuse me. Congrats on the retirement. But I like Dan Bro. I like Dan Bro. I'm not Dan Bro. I think BYU went. I've heard his name pronounced different ways by announcers. So I'm just kind of going with both. Uh, BYU by double digits. I took seven and a half a bit uh, on the on opening day, up to nine and a half now. I still think they win by 10 plus, Jim. Yeah, the number has me a little spooked on it, Kai. I was not as smart as you. I did not jump on the opener, and it has, as you said, uh, ascended throughout the week. But yeah, Duquesne's offense, they're 34th in isolation rate nationally. BYU, they're not like some unbelievable individual defenders, but they play the math game. They allow the third highest mid-range jumper rate in the country. And Duquesne will just happily step into those and fire away. And the math should tilt in BYU's favor because they take the second most threes and allow a ton of mid-rangers. Um, I'm going I'm to go with the jump shoot and Cougs, but betting the spread is is tough for me here because of where it's gotten to uh, mm. maybe may an over but I'm not quite there yet I haven't decided how I'm going to bet that game I will have a bet on it I will have a bet on every game in the first round but I don't know exactly what it's going to be probably probably BYU but I'm going to have to have Kai talk me into it more next up Akron and Creighton jump shooting Jays we go from one jump shooting team to the other Creighton laying 12 and a half 
against John Gross, who is seven and one against the spread in the tournament. A very good postseason coach here. Kai, looking at Creighton here, do you think they can blow out Akron the same way you discussed with BYU? I don't, Jim. I think Akron hangs, just like UCLA in 2022. They're old. Enrique Freeman, Ali Ali uh, are legit power six level players. Uh, and I really like that Creighton cannot exploit Akron's biggest weakness, which is ball handling. They're dead last in the country in turnover rate, forced. It's a great matchup, I think, for Akron. Freeman takes care of Kalkbrenner, takes care of quotation marks. It's going to be a battle. Kalkbrenner is better, but I think Freeman can hold his own. Akron defends the three pretty well. That's obviously key against the jump shooting Jays. It should be a slower paced game, and I know Akron's going to, Matt, win ugly or try to win ugly in this one. Akron plus 13 uh, is a bet for me. It's in consideration for one of my best bets on Thursday. Yeah, I've been kind of cool on this Akron team all year, but I yeah, 12 and a half feels like a lot. Um, but you look at the ATS splits this year, it surprises me to see Akron at three and five against the spread of an underdog. Eight games, tiny sample. I think the general perception that we have of them, how they're constructed, how they played as an underdog against UCLA, another, another very formidable team two years ago with this exact same nucleus. Uh, I have a lot of confidence that even just looking at one game as an historical precedent, I, I think they're going to compete here with Creighton. Um, I, I've kind of I've sold some of my Creighton share shim. I think this game's a lot closer. The lack of cr- depth Creighton has, the lack of perimeter dynamism, I think makes it hard for them to extend, even if they're making a ton of threes. Right? Like I think they're going to have to if they're going to beat Akron by a big big margin, it's going to have to they're up to make threes and win the boards. It's going to be tough to do both against Akron. I'm like a little surprised they've been a underdog eight times. Just looking at their schedule, uh, that that like doesn't fully hit me and. Uh, I guess early in the year that the three game stretch Utah State, Drake, UNLV, they did not have Ali Ali for those games. Yep. Uh, he then got in the lineup and is clearance, arguably right? one of their best players. Um, so I, I think he's going to be important here, handling the ball a little bit in some of the ball screen stuff because you do need guys to score in the mid range against the Creighton drop coverage. Uh, Kalkbrenner just sitting there waiting at the rim. Freeman, a little undersized, could be a challenge there, uh, but his effort level is so high that I think he'll be okay. I do think this stays close. I kind of like the under, but it's been bet up, um, so I may I might wait to see how far it goes up in terms of total one forty and a half up to one forty one and a half. Uh, would love to see it just keep ticking up and and get a little better number there, but um, I have already bet Akron. Not sure I'm going to bet the under. We'll see, but I'm with Kai. I think it's just a competitive brawl gruesome type of game there in the afternoon i'm surprised it hasn't moved more he has it feels like Akron Which is like the kid toward akron i just think everyone's on akron feels like it's a, just I a know. sound I, I haven't seen that <clears throat> excuse me i haven't seen anybody on akron or great for that matter yeah this, this hasn't been one of the popular like talking head type games where one team gets getting a ton of love and the other's not so I don't know, Matt. What about Long Beach State, Arizona? This is going to be much more aesthetically pleasing for those wanting to see up tempo, wanting to see points. Uh, this total has been bet up, unsurprisingly, uh, one fifty nine and a half up to one sixty one. Spread has stayed steady around twenty and a half. Matthias, I know you have concerns about Beach playing up sometimes because they love to get in a track meet. Uh, what are you looking at here? I think this game comes down to how much. Does Arizona want to play defense in the second half when they're up 10 to 20, right? I think, so look at Long Beach's results this year. Going back a few years, I've talked about how it's like every season Long Beach plays UCLA in the non-con and Rick and Matson and Cronin are like, hey, we're going to play 85 possessions. Let your guys run, let my guys run, see what happens. And Beach has been blown out in those games, but they do put up big time points against good defenses when the good defense isn't always locked in for a full 40 minutes. This year at San Diego State, at San Diego State, where they have been, or the Aztecs were awesome all year, put up 76 points, 78 possessions. Um, they went to USC, put up 79, albeit in overtime. Still, they have run with the big boys and they have kept pace, you know, relative to spread expectations. I think they do it again. Like, I know we talked about Arizona's terrifying spurt ability, but I do think Long Beach, with their talent, all healthy, back intact, especially Marcus Deshonis, I think they got enough to to keep it within the margin of 20, 20 and a half, Jimbo. Is is there any chance, Matt, just real quick, do, do you think they've been doing that because it's not conference and it doesn't matter? And, and this, this game now, actually matters? Matters yeah. a ton? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah, obviously, that, yes. But my counter to that would be if you have a game in less than 48 hours, you know, are you really going to want to push your starters 40 minutes to the pedal to the metal if you're Tommy Lloyd, if you're up 12, 15 with 
six to go. I don't know. Right. Maybe, no, no, no. Maybe. I'm talking pace. I'm talking pace. Like, oh, has Beast just been willing to go track me, yada, 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 for like up and down because they're like, well, who Gets cares if we lose to UCLA by 25? It's fun exhibition. In, in so will Monson come out with a curveball of all curveballs? I guess what we're trying to. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, they played three three straight games Certainly under can. seventy possessions in the in the Big West tournaments. I don't know, just yeah, a little devil's advocate trip. there. Yeah, worth repeating from our marathon podcast: Arizona's margins against teams of Long Beach's caliber: Arizona State by eighteen forty five, Cal by twenty six and nineteen, Colgate by twenty seven, Arlington by forty five, Belmont by thirty two. It just really scares me <laughs> when when Arizona plays a team that I know they're categorically better than across the board. Uh, but Beach has athletes. I really worry about that they can't shoot. That's killer to me against Arizona if you can't at least shoot the ball. I think Arizona scores inside it will. I think they control the boards. But given Lloyd's history, short history in the tournament, given Caleb Love's ability to short circuit, if Beach gets hot and gets up early and Arizona has to play from behind somehow, I, I think Beach plus 20 and a half is the better bet in this game than, than the other side. Yeah, I bet Beach. I bet the over already, despite my devil's advocate on the pace there. I, I do think we oh, see good. a loosey goosey sure. second half. Yeah, no, just hey, devil's advocate. Now you want to get all the all the perspectives it. in here. It's always, it's always. Um, the only maybe a little bit spooky on the uh, over two years ago when Arizona was a one seed, they played Wright State, who plays no defense, and it was only 157 points total, but there was 76 possessions, and uh, I think this one gets up in that range. There's only one, only one by 17 in that game. So hopefully they do the same thing to the beach here. Stay with inside that 20 number and all of us will be happy. So the chat, Ryan N, best bet on Thursday, Long Beach. Um, now we've got Illinois, Moorhead State. Illinois, another big favorite with a dominant offense. Loves to get up and down. Not quite as transition reliant, but Taryn Shannon is a monster in that setting. Kai, we've seen a little bit of money come in on the dog here. 13 down to 12 for Moorhead. Total also sinking, 151 down to 148. Betting an under in an Illinois game, always a little bit spooky, but that's definitely what Moorhead State wants to do, slow the game down. Uh, how, how do you view this matchup? Uh, a little nervous that Moorhead has lost by 30-plus to Bama and Purdue this year and by 20-plus to Penn State. However, I, I do like their size against Illinois. It is way more than a typical mid-major. I think that kind of at least puts up a fight against the strong, you know, Shannon, Domask drives in Illinois kind of gets away with because they play, frankly, smaller backcourts uh, all the time. Minix is a star, Riley Minix for Moorhead State. I don't think Illinois will take advantage of Moorhead's lacking ball handling. I am intrigued by Moorhead plus 12, Matt. The question that they can, if they can score is a real one, but they do shoot a ton of threes. It, it could be high variance here. I can see a, a scenario where they get, they, excuse me, where they get hot. Moorhead plus 12 is the way I'm leaning in this game. One point about Moorhead, I didn't really remember. Um, it hit me last. They they have some good positional size. Like I forgot they had the Deontay Miles dude up front, the former um, Xavier transfer, who actually missed some time, came back. He's a pretty key linchpin. Now, Illinois doesn't really play with a traditional five unless they have Dane Danger, but it's nice that you have a counter to Danger if he comes in and dominates, as we saw him do in small spurts at the Big Ten tournament. Also, Jordan Lathan, uh, Thelwell, Eddie Ricks, Khalil Thomas, Six five, six four, six five, six seven. Like you need some good wingish type size to guard Shannon and Domask, who have been you know mismatches in the Big Ten. Major concern as you step down in competition for Moorhead. But again, I think they actually have on paper the personnel to not be completely like, oh crap, we have mismatches all over the floor. We got to completely scramble here. Uh, I still think Illinois is just too much, too talented. The way they get out transition, really well coached team in Moorhead. I just think this is a Jimmy's and Joe's bet, Jim, not Nexus knows. Yeah, Moorhead's got to keep it in the half court. Like it, it, they cannot let this game get up and down, uh, and they, they sort of did in some of those those big blowouts. Like, why are you playing a seventy six possession game against Penn State? Perhaps because they couldn't handle the pressure. That's that's a big part of that. Turning the ball over in Indiana, or excuse me, Illinois does not turn uh, anybody over. Their defense is not prone to do that whatsoever, and I think that helps Moorhead State hang around. I bet plus twelve. Um, at the risk of getting torched by the ridiculous uh, offense that, that Illinois has. I think they can hang around, especially if they slow it down. So Moorhead plus 12 for me. All right, next up on Thursday, Oregon, South Carolina. Matt, this is one of my best bets. I am taking Oregon. Money line here. Uh, I know it's kind of waffled around pick them. They might be the favorite in some places. Looking at Circa right now, South Carolina minus one. Uh, I'm still taking 
money line on a almost plus money price there on the duckies. Tell me why I'm crazy or why I'm correct. No, you're right. You got this one right. Um, proud of you. Great handicap, sharp nice. reads. Kai, I think he'll probably slam dunk the trifecta sweep here for our quack, 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 Oregon dunks. I had a gut epiphany last night that maybe we'll run the sucker side here. I, I mentioned how um, I, I saw the post-game presser with Altman, or the, sorry, the pre-game presser with Altman yesterday. And Altman's always so like, the sky's falling, we're so hurt and so injured, we're terrible. So, But I didn't like his general tone of it feels like it's a scramble turnaround here given the run they went through and and now you got to fly to Pittsburgh to play a team on the same East Coast time zone. I, I don't know. And South Carolina, Kai, I know you've been ringing the regression bells all year and to some degree you were accurate coming down the stretch, but um, that's a tough team to play, right? It's unique, it's different, execution-y, tough, physical. I just think Oregon size and the Infale Dante factor are too much. I took the duckies. Yeah, I mean, they can hang, they can hang, and they can get blown up by 30. It's kind of what they've done all year, South Carolina. They they are the, the second lowest rated at-large team outside of Virginia, uh, and yet they're Which on the sixth crazy. line. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it is wild. Um, the Ducks are healthier, man, and I, I keep harkening back to 2019. I can't get out of my head, right? Won the Pac-12, got the 12th seed, made the Sweet 16. And Jeffrey said in the chat here, yeah, Dana Altman, man. 7-0 in the first round, 15-5 and against the spread in the tournament. He's had seven appearances with Oregon, and he's made the second weekend six times. His tournament track record is very, very good. I think Dante and Evans are a fantastic matchup for Murray Boyles and Mac. I love Jackson Shellstad, who doesn't. Yeah, Oregon plus one and a half, Jim, uh, is where I took in this game. Yeah, I know Oregon's shorthanded, you know, no Biddle, no Bartholomew, no Cook from the freshman class, but yeah. the guys they have are really good, and I, I trust them. When Dante is in there, I mean, he's just a complete game changer. Yeah, he's Think awesome. Back to the, like, the 20 awesome. rebound game he had in the opening day of the, the college basketball season, then had to sit out a while, and then it was 12 for 12 from the field against Colorado's front line in the Pac-12 tournament final. He's just great. I love Shalstad as the coordinator uh, on on the offense. There is the, the wrinkle of Lamont Paris has seen Oregon in the postseason a few times way back when he was on Wisconsin staff in the, in the mid-2010s. I'm not buying that, though. That Wisconsin team was just a complete juggernaut. The, the matchup angle doesn't matter as much to me there. Um, Kai, the one caveat with, with South Carolina being so lowly rated, they are 38th in Bartorvik since Colin Murray Boyles moved into the starting lineup. Yeah, um, Matters January 13th, but even that, like 38th, they're not some mm -hmm. that's not a six seed in, in terms right. of predictive value. So, uh, I'm going with Oregon, going with that Altman track record. I'm glad you said the stat, I don't even have to anymore. I, I love him in the tournament. The Ducks, we're quacking, we're quacking, boys. Sorry, Pat, in the chat for talking down in South Carolina, but I believe, be real quick, them. sorry, Dante is 43 of 49 for his last 49 shots against. Colorado, Arizona, UCLA, Utah. Not bad front lines. And these shots are not just like dunks. Like he's making some tough shots. Like dude's really good. He'd be really all American good. if he were healthy all year. Hot take. Yeah. He just gets insane position because he's ginormous. He's just so it's big. just like you can't keep him off the block. Yeah. Shocking. Uh, Nevada there. versus Dayton. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Nevada versus Dayton. Next up, a Mountain West team that I've been wanting to fade versus an A10 team that has been fading. Uh, that is a, a tough conundrum here in the matchup. Matthias, you've been down on these flyers of late. What are you looking at here? We, we got a spread of Nevada minus one total coming down 136 and a half right now. I don't like either team. I, I think I took Nevada reluctantly. Um, I, I will have a bet on every game in this first round. This is one I haven't quite pulled the trigger on. Um, even if it's a penny bet, Kai, I have to at least go to war with, with the books on, on all of these games. I'm taking the pack games at altitude closer to home, tougher spot for Dayton. I don't trust Dayton's point guard situation, nor do I trust their shooting. Both of which have been much better than we thought they'd be with the, with after Malachi Smith, their point guard got hurt early in the season. Another testament to Anthony Grant, how great of a job he's done this season with the dwindling depth. I just think it catches up to him in this game because Nevada has plenty of depth and they have lots of positional size on the perimeter with black shear, that's you know, and the kind of the long wings uh, that that can give those guards problems. So, wow, I I, I, I love Javon Bennett. I've, I think he's played awesome this year. Uh, he's played really well. Dayton's he has played very guard. well. No but problem. also, Dayton's point guard doesn't really matter. They run offense through Holmes. It's it's initiation through Holmes. It's Holmes in the block, at the elbow, top of the key. He's an All American. Full stop. Nevada doesn't have that, and he's a, he's a matchup problem for anybody, even Nevada. The key is what you said. It's the backcourt and wing size for Nevada because Elvis, Bennett, Cheeks, they're not big. 
that's a problem. Santos, probably have a matchup for him. He's very underrated for Dayton. What I like about Dayton is they can shoot the crap out of the ball. Top 30 three-point attempt rate, number three three-point percentage. I love those teams in March. They always make games into wars, defend like crazy. They're super long, um, not tall, but long. Uh, their guards and Holmes is a freak. Strength for strength, Jim's interesting here. Nevada's top three in the country in free throw attempt rate. Dayton, top three in the country in three point, excuse me, free throw attempt rate defense. They do not foul. Can Nevada be foul merchants gets the line against one of the best teams at defending without fouling? I'm not sure. Also, Dayton fans, they travel well. Even out to Salt Lake, I think they're going to travel well. I took some Dayton plus one and a half. Yep, I took Dayton as well. I also took the under. I, the only thing really spooking me on the under, I think the pace is going to be low. I think scoring inside is going to be tough for both teams. But both teams surrender a lot of threes, and both teams are top 40 nationally in three-point percentage. Dayton, number three in the entire country, over 40%. Uh, that's that's a big part of why I like them on the side. I, I think they're just going to shoot over the top in Nevada. Uh, Steve Alford, 6-11 and 11 against the spread in the NCAA tournament. Not a guy I really trust in the setting. He's had good teams flame out. He's had bad teams flame out uh, predictably. I think Dayton gets him here, but I don't see either team really giving Arizona much of a fight in the second round. That's that's really kind of where I land. Yeah, I think it's I, a weaker. Great draw for game. Arizona. That was my whole takeaway from this region. Just to, for a team that struggled with certain matchups, they had a great draw to the at least the second weekend. Yeah, I mean, Dayton, both these teams will try to slow them down, which yeah. is good. I just don't think they're good enough to beat Arizona. Uh, all right, last one from the first part of the uh, Thursday section here. Oakland versus Kentucky. Now, we had some fun with this one. I think we settled on this being one of our favorite first to 10, first to 15 type of bets because is Kentucky going to come out and engage? They don't start Reed Shepard or Rob Dillingham, which certainly helps the team playing against them. Oakland has a couple shooters that can light it up from beyond the arc and, and get things going early. What? How, how do you see, the? I guess, the, the full game handicap Oakland getting 13 and a half, Kentucky taking a little bit of money and the total at 164 at Circa. Yeah, it was interesting. I saw Calipari on Twitter. I think it was his like weekly radio show yesterday <laughs> talking about some adjustments he's going to make playing, playing two bigs at the same time, kind of trying some different stuff. Um, I, I don't know. Part of me was like, oh, it's cute to see Cal getting creative here. But I was like, I don't, we don't need to be tinkering at, what at we this doing? point, Cal. Like, like <laughs> Kind of, you should have the recipe in the in the hopper by now. I don't know why we're trying to. Anyway, all that aside, Jim, he did talk about how frustrating it's been, how they need to get off to better starts. I love the first to fifteen bet. I was going to do the price calculation before the show here to see what the fair price is. You will not get a fair price if you're betting the dogs in these. You just no. you just have to accept it. Who cares? Doesn't matter. You have the winner. That's all you got to know. Um, Kai, full game. Talked about it yesterday. Oakland. They run a ton of sets on offense. Right. There's no ball screen. It's point guard. Bring it up. Find goal key, find Landman coming off down screens, isolate Trey Townsend in post to 1v1 situations, play off Townsend. Uh, it's just a, you know, it's funny. It's like a simple type of offense from where we come from in our basketball heritage, but it's also very different from what Kentucky saw most of the year, which is, you know, pick and roll and all, as all the modern teams do these days. So there's a lot of matchups, a lot of matchup nuances that Kentucky will have to navigate. I do think they win. I think Oakland does cover, though. Yeah, I'm scared of Kentucky in general, but remember UNCW, St. Joe's, they both had Kentucky on the ropes at Rupp. Wilmington won, St. Joe's should have won. This team is beatable, and Oakland has competed with power teams this season, winning at Xavier, nearly beating Ohio State and Illinois at those places. They can shoot. Golke and Lampman, man, flamethrowers. These guys will get up 15 threes in this game. That's not even a hyperbole. Like, Golke could be like 8 for 10 from 3. Uh, and Towson and Conway are a great 1-2 combo up front. The worry is the zone. Kentucky's an awesome three-point shooting team, best in the country. And, of course, the worry is the glass. Now, Kentucky doesn't have a great offensive rebounding rate, but I still think they can kind of own the glass against Oakland's zone if Campy decides to stay in that. We'll see if he does. I don't love the Horizon League's track record, Jim, in the dance, but I do think the Grizz can make it interesting for a bit. Hang for 20 to 30 minutes, and we hope we hang on and don't get forked at the end there. So I, I lean towards Oakland plus 14. Yeah, I'm not I'm not betting the side in this one. I, I think the Horizon thing is a concern. The zone eventually getting shredded is a concern. I'm betting the over. Uh, the you know, Looking back at Oakland's matchups against Power conference teams, Matt, they've slowed them down. They played a really slow game with Illinois, played a slow game with Ohio State. The zone does have that effect, but I think it's going to be a mega efficient game here. 
Kentucky's been one of the best over teams in the entire country, 23 and nine to the over this year. They're going to keep the foot on the gas pedal. Uh, they got depth. So even if, you know, later in the, the game, they're up big. I think they still try to run, try to score. All those guys are making NBA draft cases while they're coming off the bench. So I like the over. I am staying away from the side. I'm just a little spooked on it. So uh, first to 15 and the over. Well, I'll, I'll be betting in this game. All right, we got a little break in the outline, Kai. Do we want to just, you know, take a cocktail hour or what do we want to do here? No, no. Uh, praise Circa, and I'm switching the outline right now for the fellas. Would love to. Yeah, this show is sponsored by Circa Resort and Casino. We'll be out there the second weekend, Sweet 16 and Elite Eight. So if you are out there, make sure to check out Circa, the best place to watch games, sportsbook, the pool. Absolutely incredible. Also download the app. Make sure you bet on Circa. They have a lot of creative offerings for this. They're the only book that is going to have yes and no markets for the sweets or for the for the final four who's going to win the region you can actually bet against teams yep. like everybody always wants to do that oh i just don't think duke's going to make it far well now you can actually put your hard-earned dollars on it and that's going to line up his brinks truck to bet on that they'll also have uh like conference win totals they'll have team versus team markets last year i had a yukon versus tennessee most wins in the tournament wager it was awesome because Obviously, you can won the most games you possibly could, and I was able to bet against Rick Barnes at the same time. That worked out great. So just finding these different fun bet offerings, uh, Circa will have a lot of them. So download that app and check it out. Jim, I have a uh, a winner while Kai – I'll try and stall for Kai. For Rundown's ready, man. Here. We're good to go whenever you want. Okay, but, well, but please, wait for me, I have, I have a lock. I have an absolute lock here. Uh, out of the West region, mm -hmm. Jim, you mentioned the West, the yes-no markets that Circa offers, very convenient. I am taking the no on UNC. Minus three fifty. Minus three fifty. Wow, Matt's laying some There's juice. A, drinking they it should down. be a very, very short favorite in their round of thirty-two game, and you got to win two more beyond that with Arizona lurking, Baylor lurking, St. Mary's. Yeah, I that that's one of my th that's a strong ass wager for me for sure. Wow. Okay. Will Wade's pumping out that wager for you. We love to hear it. All right, on that circa market. So check those out, folks. Okay, back to the outline. McNeese first Gonzaga. This one gave me some consternation trying to figure out what I wanted to bet in this game. Good and Matthias, I what? Good Come word. On. Oh, thank you. Yeah. All right. Dug up my my dictionary this morning. <laughs> um, I ended up settling on McNeese. I, I think they're going to be able to hang around here. They can kind of bother Gonzaga. I thought about the under because I think McNeese will try to slow it down a little bit. Uh, but I just see them being feisty. I think if I'd bet on Gonzaga, I'd be like, why are we down one with 10 minutes left in this game? Uh, so McNeese felt right to me. But Matthias, what, what, what do you look at with this one? I went Gonzaga. Um, Number-wise, six feels really sharp. This is actually one of the sharper opening, or the sharpest openers in current lines. I don't have any edge side-wise. Even totals what it, you know, feels about right. Uh, I, I think Gonzaga... I don't know, Kai, is there a concern to you that the best guard on the floor in this game, not overall, in this game, plays for McNeese? That does kind of concern me. I don't think that's true, though. I think I think Nimhard's the best guard in the game. I actually do, I too. agree, but don't you think Shahada Wells, like, clearly he has takeover potential. He's really I just good. I don't like that, going against that risk. That's that's what concerns me, because you're going to need to make some tough yeah. shots against Gonzaga's D. They're going to shell it up inside, but McNeese can do that. Um, and Gonzaga, if they're not making threes against the very – conservative park the bus defense that McNeese probably deploys in this game, whether it's zone or in man form, that does worry me too. Well, there's no answer for EK. McNeese, for how good they've been, they've played two top 100 teams this year. It's VCU and LaTeX. This is the best team they've played by far. It's the best offense they've played by far. It's the best big guy they've played by far in EK. I, I don't think they're going to be able to stop him. Uh, Nimhard is the best guard in the floor, in my opinion. The, the Zags size advantage is huge. Their discipline on defense is huge. They're not picking up Southland fouls. McNeese isn't going to live at the line like they can against Southland foes. Um, that's not to discount the talent on McNeese. They have legitimate talent. Will Wade's put together a hell of a roster, clearly. They've won 30-plus games. Um, I wouldn't be surprised this one's close, Jim, but I do think the, the Zags pull it out. I would lean towards their way at, at minus six. I also lean towards the over in this game. I think it's going to be a little pacey, a little peppy. Okay. You do like the over. All right. That'll probably keep me off the under. I don't know why I was even considering it. Come on, Jim. Don't be crazy. Oh, no, you could be right. Um, I'm not. I'm not God. The e you are. We call you Kai God, McEwen. Uh, EK, EK has some foul issues. That That is my concern. I know it, that's against uh, WCC competition and not Southland, but McNeese wants to bold their way to the line. They've got a bunch of different guys that do it. 
that would concern me if he's if he's sidelined this becomes like a pretty darn even matchup to me so perhaps they target him we'll see how the game is officiated uh, I just think McNeese is going to be feisty under Wade and, and hang around. So uh, also Mark Few, 20 and 30 against the spread in the big dance. Not a not a great bet. So I'm going with McNeese there, taking the points. I got plus six and a half is where I landed on that. All right, South Dakota State and Iowa State, fellas. Iowa State, the team that pissed off a country by blowing teams out in the non-conference portion, but then they backed it up in the Big 12, finishing second and winning the Big 12 tournament. Maybe they were just actually good the whole time. That's an interesting <laughs> interesting argument to make there. Um, Kai, I, I, the, the concerns with them are on the offensive end, but Monkilovich can also knock down jumpers. Lipsy has improved quite a bit. So sometimes Keyshawn Gilbert and Curtis Jones get a little watch me work and – that doesn't always work. Um, South Dakota State might turn the ball over a little bit. We'll see. Iowa State pressures. What do you see in this matchup? Uh, Iowa State laying, I believe it's 14, uh, 16. Seven, yeah, up to 70, I think, in some places. Yeah. Uh, we talked about this yesterday. Otzberger, his old team. How fun. He took this team to two NCAA tournaments back in 17 and 18. Uh, Iowa State's defense really concerns me. Um, now, South Dakota State... They have experienced guards. Mayo, Easley, Mims, they're all upperclassmen. Gary's a freshman. He, he worries me a bit. Can they handle the pressure against Iowa State? By far the best defense in the uh, they've ever faced this season. The best defense in the country. That's a concern. They can shoot, though. They have four or five guys on the floor at all times that can shoot the three. That's their saving grace. Iowa State will probably allow the three-point shot um, you know, to a higher degree than anything else for sure. And they're not going to overwhelm South Dakota State, Matt, on the other end. Um, certainly, they have the talent, but not an explosive offense. So if Mayo can handle the ball, if the other guys can handle the ball, I think they can hang. I lean towards South Dakota State at plus 17. I think the spread's just a bit high for me to, to lay with Iowa State. It does feel high, but I've well, I've just come around that I've probably had Iowa State underrated all season. Um, and I've been beating the South Dakota State is not that good drum. And I think this matchup against a team that can pressure and just overwhelm those guards who have not played like any sort of pressure in three months. The one thing for South Dakota State that we probably, that I probably discounted was they do play a good non-con like every year under Henderson. Like they, they do challenge themselves. We, they played UCF really competitively in that, uh, that NTE played George Mason competitively. Those are two top 100 teams. K state took them to the woodshed though. And that's what kind of bothered me. It's like K state overwhelmed this team with defensive pressure. Like what do you think Iowa state's going to do? Um, I know that game was November 13th, and that was a long time ago, and this team's better now. I don't think they had um, Matt Mims in that game, pretty key off guard. Still, I just don't think this is going to set up well for for the Jack Bunnies. They have size. They, they are battle-tested, but I just think the pressure will eventually crack them uh, in the second half, Jim. That's where I settle. I bet Iowa State minus 16, so perhaps there's a chance Ty or I push, but we are head-to-head -head in this one. Um, Iowa State is a big favorite. It's just been awesome for years, and uh, I just don't think South Dakota State's seen that kind of pressure. They did turn it over 22.5% of the time against UCF, despite hanging around in that game. They just made threes and free throws to to stick around. Um, I think the turnovers eventually overwhelm, and the athleticism defensively of, of Iowa State is just a little too much for South Dakota State in this one. So the clones for me. Moving on. Guys, we guys, we, we might have to hurry to get to make sure we get in, get done in time for the Friday show. Well, um, yeah. where's I have? I guess we can always long. start a little later. Everyone that's yeah, probably that's watching true. is here. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, this is the one game I have zero bets on so far. I, I, I made a bunch of bets last night. St. Peter's, Tennessee. I have gone back and forth on both the total and the side. Matthias, will you guide me to the correct place with this game? Uh, market likes Tennessee. I, I can see why. Um, you know, this St. Peter's team is not the St. Peter's team of two years ago. just isn't. Although Corey Washington has made this team far better than their analytic profile indicates. I will give them that. Uh, I just like teams like Tennessee. There's a few others we'll talk about. The teams that have had consistent tournament troubles, most of them got different this offseason this year. Tennessee being one of those teams. Don't connect, come in. Oh, look, we can run. We can score. We can space the floor. Curious how that antidote translates in the first couple of rounds. Obviously, it'll be a small sample. I know we don't overreact to it. But I do think there's a little bit of the, we know we've stunk in the tournament. We struggle with teams that can zone us, that can muck it up. Rick Barnes, I'm sure, is just like eating himself at night, hearing all of the Rick Barnes sucks in tournament stuff. 
I didn't think the roster he has is built to blow out bad teams for once. So I think Tennessee does lay the wood here, Kai. Yeah, they can score. That's the difference this year. They can score and they run. Thank you, Tennessee. They run. They don't play slow in the half court. They're they're less susceptible to a major upset, a horrible upset in the tournament. I, St. Peter's will try to get them into that slog. I just don't think they can. This is not the St. Peacock's team that made the Elite Eight run. Bully ball is not going to work against Tennessee. Remember when Longwood tried to make that work against Tennessee? It didn't work. The balls are going to pester the hell out of the ball handlers. That's a real edge for Tennessee. And don't connect, man. He is the the great equalizer in this game or unfair advantage in this game. Uh, I lean Tennessee 21. It is getting pretty up there uh, in terms of you know feeling good about the spread because I don't think Tennessee minds playing a little bit of a slower game. Um, however, I, I do lean their way on the, on the huge spread here. Yeah, that's that's where I'm I'm looking at it, Kai. The, they're like by games or 68 possessions, Tennessee Tech, 63 Wofford, right. 72 Georgia Southern, but then Tarleton State slowed them to 61. And that has what been giving me trouble with the side and the total. Like if it gets it, if it gets going, Tennessee gets to do what they want to do. I think they can smash them and blow them out. But if they're content to kind of just, all right, we'll we'll get into this half court grind. Rick Barnes loves to do that, be a little micromanager and, and focus on his defense and out physical you then I think the under and the dog have a little value. So I'm probably going to have to further think about and ponder this game. Maybe I don't even bet it until right up until tip time uh, just to have something. It'll be a half unit for mm-hmm. me on this one. This is this is a discounted bet. Now moving to a game where I have bet, NC State and Texas Tech. I've actually bet the side and the total in this one. Uh, Matt, I know you love Mr. Mr. Burns on, on the NC State yeah, side. Excellent. There you go. Texas Tech laying five and a half, total of 145 and a half. Matthias, what are you looking at? Yeah, I like NC State. I think they keep it going. Mm-hmm. Um, the the talent is very comparable. I don't think Texas Tech is like anywhere. Oodles more talented than NC State. So you're looking at, you know, you break it down into, do you think Grant McCaslin is five and a half points better than Kevin Keats? I'm not going to oversimplify it to that level, but I think that's one way you can break this down. Um, and NC State, like, a lot of the games they play a little closer at the resume this year, like the Tennessee game early in the season, they were right with Tennessee for most of that game. Ended up losing, I think, by nine. UNC game late in the year, they're up eight and a half, ended up losing by 12. So, like, they've had stretches where they can play to a really high level. I think now they're actually fin- figuring out how to close games to some degree. I don't know if I all the way trust them because I still think there are some very questionable decision with shots and possession management when you have a lead late in the game, when you are tied, when it's close. Against Texas Tech, Grant McCaslin will exploit that stuff. I just don't like this roster that McCaslin has, especially if Warren Washington Kai is indeed going to be hampered or out. Um, you don't like this roster? No, I do when healthy. I don't like it as it's oh. currently constructed. I think it's a little thin. It's a little too guard and shooting reliant, which is not great. I, hey, personally, I don't love the roster. I think McCaslin's done a great job. I, I don't think this is a spectacular roster by by any means. I just think McCaslin's a top 10 coach. Uh yeah, their their defense is not the same that Texas Tech or Grant McCaslin is is used to, but their offense is very good. Love Pop Isaacs. He he is made for March. One of those guys. Hashtag made for March. NC State. If you look at their results against league competition, they actually are pretty competitive in, in most of those games. It's not like they're getting blown out. Uh, they weren't covering spreads. They were competitive. And the ACC run, I think, was a bit of a continuation of that. Of course, some luck involved in that run, especially against Virginia. But I do think Burns is a huge problem for Washington, not just his scoring, but his passing as well. And Horn, Taylor, Marcel, they don't turn the ball over. NC State does not make mistakes. That's huge in a tournament setting. I think it's going to be a fun game to watch. I can see NC State pulling the upset. I did take NC State plus five. There you go. All right. Uh, I'm going with similar to last year. I bet against NC State in the tournament against Creighton. Went okay. I'm going to do the same thing with Texas Tech here. I laid the five. Uh, thankfully, was able to get a five. I also bet the over. I think it's an efficiency over in this one. NC State will try to get it going up and down. I'm not sure Texas Tech will really get into that, but I think both teams can make shots. DJ Burns can probably have his way inside. Even if Washington plays and is somewhat limited, uh, Burns is just too much of a man-child down there. Uh, the refrigerator with with footwork with ballerina footwork, right, Kai? That's what it was. Is that what he said? He was a, a refrigerator with that with ballerina footwork. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just a fantastic descriptor there on Burns. Um, but I'm going the other way. I'm going with McCaslin in the postseason. Remember, won the NIT last year, um, beat Purdue at North Texas. I just think he's a really good game planner, and I think he'll be ready for a team that 
has just put out six games worth of game film over like an eight day span. Uh, there's a lot out there on them. And remember, one miracle shot away from them not being at this position. Sure. So I'm going with Texas Tech. Now, Samford and Kansas. I've also bet the side and the total here, Kai. And spoiler alert, it's similar. I went favorite and over. I think Kansas is willing to play up and down against Samford's pressure, and they're going to break it consistently. Uh, I, I think there's a lot of points, and I think Kansas scores quite a few of them. Am I wrong? Am I right? I think you're right. Uh, I expect McCuller and Dickinson to be healthy. Uh, I think they both play. Again, I go back to the Sanford Purdue game, man. First game of the year, but it was a 53 point game. I, I can't get that out of my head. That's the only top 100 team they've played outside of VCU, who they also lost to. So Sanford has zero top 100 wins. I think Dickinson has a real advantage inside, despite a chore. Chore has been awesome this season. He just can't compete with Dickinson. Dickinson's a monster. Sanford can shoot. That's their path, just like South Dakota State, just like other teams. If they get hot, they stay hot. The three point shot is king. Uh, their pressure, though, it's not going to phase Dewan Harris. It's not going to phase Kevin McCuller. And there's zero answer for KJ Adams. He's the piece that's always forgotten on Kansas. I think he's just a different type of player that Sanford can't really handle. So I did take some KU minus seven. I would still take KU minus seven and a half, Matt. Yeah, eight at circa, eight and a half, actually, at some places. It's, yeah, I would, it's ticking up today. It's continuing to rise and the over also rising as well. I actually kind of like the under. Um, Ooh, I don't know. Tell that me looks why. tough. I think Sanford played more to an under in their last five or six games, um, and it was effective. They got their bigs back that helped their defense, which was horrible toward the end of the year, and they started playing more zone. I think they're going to have to play some zone against Kansas. I don't think Bucky's going to unleash the holy fury of Bucky Ball in its truest form. I think he knows that's a terrible thing. If he does, I love Kansas and I love the over. I got like Kansas regardless because I can score against either type of defense, whatever, however, you know, whatever card Bucky pulls out of his out of his uh, out of the hat but um the Kansas passing Kai is the key can obviously I, ahead, they have sorry. to overcome their lack of shooting um but the way KU you can can dish the rock um is going to be a difference in this game can you change your style that drastically though like right now like, like Bucky ball is Bucky ball that's what they've been playing for years well, they, they played some zone they played some one three one they played some two three in that socon tournament like I think he has a little more wrinkles that he just doesn't show much in the socon because he doesn't have to like they play to their but, strengths and that dominates you have to be a little different I think when you rise to like KU the semis and the finals there were 75 and 77 possessions it's not like he was like all right we're now an under team we slow the game down because it's yeah no they got a little helter skelter late but most of those they was a little nip and tuck for most of the way I thought offensively though they're still gonna do their normal push yeah yeah yeah, I agree yeah so I'm I yeah I'm I'm sticking with the side or the the favorite in the over there I I think Kansas can score in the half court they can score in the full court yeah having multiple different guys that love to share the ball Maybe it's uh, we're watching Matt, what you call him, Justin Timberfake, brick jumpers, him and El Marco. But Great name. The top four, the top four with with Furphy emerging and then uh, Harris, Adams, McCuller, Dickinson. Uh, and that's that's just that team's just actually good when healthy. And I think they'll be closer to that for this tournament. Uh, Drake versus Washington State, Kai, essentially a toss up game in the 7 10. Two teams that we think are very well coached, two teams we've liked for years, and now it's a bummer to see them against each other. Uh, we have seen the total or the the side flip from Washington State as a favorite over to Drake, the 10 seed, laying one and a half at circa right now. The total's been bet down 139 and a half down to 138. What are your what are, what are your what's your take here? Yeah, man. Two well coached teams. Uh shame they're meeting, but I guess Drake had to play somebody. Uh Drake's damn good. Beat Nevada by 19 on neutral. They score. They're excellent shooters, four shooters on the floor at all times. Tucker DeVries is a pro. They're experienced. They have size. Best defensive rebounding team in the country. Washington State usually can take advantage of that, being as big as they are. Can't do that against Drake. And I also love the fact they can put Overton or Connor Enright on Miles Rice. I think it's a, a nice luxury for Drake to have, multiple guys that can have that assignment. So for me, it's Drake minus one and a half. I, I did get them a bit at, at plus one and a half. The difference between those two numbers is negligible. Yeah. Oh, I think Drake isn't. He, until it isn't. Yeah, until it, <laughs> it is. <laughs> Drake last year. What was the, whatever. Um, Drake is a dynamite dog. They are well coached. They defend the way they defend. The Just their overall style is like a perfect type of, that's the blueprint you want, I think, as a dog going into a tournament that can win multiple games. I, I just don't know if they're, Better than Washington State? I mean, I think that's the angle most people are missing. Everyone's on Drake. No one's on Washington State in this game. Um, and I think it's a team that's been flying under the radar all year. They play in the Pac-12. We don't take them that seriously. 
their really only flaws in the resume were once they had kind of confirmed they were at large caliber and they took a couple of took on some water late, but like, I think this team's really good. So I gut tells me Drake is the right pick, but I'm not going to lay points with them against Washington state. who I think it's a better team still on a neutral. I just can't in good faith do that. No, yeah, I did. I took Drake. Good for uh, you. Minus one. Yeah. Thanks. I, I, I did take it at, let me, let me double check. I want to make sure I give an accurate assessment of what I did here. Drake, 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 where are you? Oh, I can't find it. Oh, there it is, down at the bottom. Yeah, minus one and a half. I did take minus minus one and a half, not the not the money line. Um, yeah, Drake's drop coverage, I think, is key here. Washington State scoring out of pick and roll ball handlers, which is like only Miles Rice. He's the only guy that can do it. Uh, they're not highly ranked per synergy, two hundred and fifty sixth points per possession with ball screen uh, ball handlers. And yeah, that's just what Drake forces you to do with Brody dropping into the lane because he's not a true shot blocker. They just want you to go at his size and try to finish over the top uh, or pull up and take mid-range jumpers. And they've got guys that can chase around ball screens, like Kai said, Overton, Garland, and right, they're pests. So I, I'm going with Drake. I think they compete with the size of Washington State and force them to get uncomfortable on the offensive end. All right, now we've got the two games where it's a theoretical matchup, Wagner or Howard, the winner taking on UNC. And then the winner of Virginia, Colorado State taking on Texas. Matt, anything specific for you in the UNC, Wagner, or Howard? I mean, I'm sure Howard will play a little faster against UNC. Wagner, I, I have no clue how they would score points against North yep. Carolina's defense. <laughs> uh, that, that would be like a 80 to 45 kind of game. I don't think Wagner has any chance. I think Howard has at least a chance because they've proven they can sort of pretend to belong with big competition and key spots, but that's all I have there, Jim. So, Yeah, I don't think it's crazy that Howard can hang with UNC for a bit, scare them a bit, depending on the spread. Maybe they can get inside the number if it's in the mid-20s or so. Um, legit talent is a good start, and they competed with some power teams in the non-con. Uh, I think Wagner gets plastered if they play UNC. That That's the, the full analysis there, Jim. Yeah, they'll, they'll try to slow it, muck it up. They mix in a ton of zone looks, but they've got not all that much size. They have zero depth. They have literally seven players on the roster that will be wearing a uniform uh, on, on I guess, tonight and Thursday if they get there. Howard has injury concerns too. Shy Odom, big-time player. Jelani Williams has been out all year, uh, pretty much all year. And Dom Campbell, one of their big guys, also has been missing time lately. I do think Howard gets, gets by Wagner. Uh, I guess we could give a quick... Betting read on that while we're at it, sure. guys. Yeah. I bet, uh, I bet Howard uh, in that game. Kai, what did you do with that one? I lean Howard. I'll probably add a little on Howard. Yeah, okay. some over Bias. money there. Some over money there, up to one twenty eight. Pretty big. Stop move. betting overs in Wagner games. Like why? Yeah, they have yeah. I know that, that's fun. I'm not saying don't. I'm not endorsing that. Um, I guess I wish the market luck in their uh, in their endeavors there. Kai, I have absolutely no read on this game tonight. I do think Wagner is going to be more feisty than people think. I think they kind of kind of been written off for dead. Um, they're playing a lot better lately. Like, well, who's the kid that made all the mid-range jumpers against Merrimack was awesome. Like, Is that he Council? Came out of nowhere. Like, count, no. Uh, Escareza? That was, that was Teron no. Allen. Oh. That Allen, hit yeah. Kind of like a yeah. bully, kind of power wing guy. He was just killing Merrimack. He's been really good lately. I I still think Howard once. Um, I don't know if I'm on way three, but that kind of like Howard there. Yeah, but so I believe, yeah, Wagner's had one game go over this current game total in the past, like, 10 and that includes an overtime game that wouldn't have gotten over this. Like and, they, I mean, they, they just walk it up. up. Like right. every time it's like slow, slow, slow clock. Yeah, they, they only yeah. have seven guys and they have like zero offensive talent. It's just like, how can we somehow figure out enough points and, and defend enough? Uh, I'm also going to bet the under there. I hope it keeps ticking up. Good luck, folks. Uh, and then Virginia versus Colorado State. Guys, Kai, quick handicap there. I think you and I both agree that uh, as ugly and hold your nose as it is, getting three points with Virginia against an altitude team coming all the way across the country actually makes sense. Uh, yeah, I'm surprised it's got to three. I took Virginia plus three. Colorado State's not a great shooting team. You have to shoot over Virginia to win. I, I think that's a great advantage. And Virginia can score enough. I, and Beekman can can have a big game. Virginia's defense is elite. I, I think that gets them through here. So I, I took Virginia plus three. Yeah, Beekman Oliver Stevens. Uh, he yeah. he is a like take a guy away off night. Matt, he's almost yeah. Davion Mitchell esque there. Yeah, Ryan Dunn too. Yeah, they got some dudes who can defend. Just wish the other side of the ball mattered. I think Texas yeah. wins either one against either one. Jim, too much talent. Disu and Asmus being the. I hate how in on Texas I am. I was just looking kind of real quick. Circuit yeah. plug at the uh, the odds to win the Midwest. 
Kansas and Texas, notably Texas, 1850 plus 1850, Kansas plus 1400 to win the region. I feel like you're in Kansas, a kind of a bargain if they're healthy. Good luck. I'm not doing that. Okay. No. I don't know. Purdue's no. in the way, but yeah, Purdue's in the way. Gonzaga's in the way. I just, yeah, the, 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 I, I think they're healthy enough to smash Samford. I don't think they're healthy. I'm really, quite frankly, good enough to, to win this region because of their lack yeah. of depth, lack of shooting. Uh, yes, Pat Howard minus three, not one of my best bets, but uh, I am on that. Okay, let's recap best bets, guys. I the one I gave for sure already was Oregon money line. We did lose Matt, unfortunately, but he'll come back. Hopefully, he'll rescue us. Kai, I'm also going with Kansas Samford, and that over continues to tick up. But despite what Matt says, I like it. Uh, one fifty three and a half. That's what I will lock that one in at. And oh, what do you say? A third one. Nah, I'll save a third one. I'll let you go first. I want to steal everything. Uh, okay. First best bet is going to be Akron plus 13 against Creighton. I almost said that. That's why I didn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll do two best bets per day. How about that? Second best bet is going to be NC State plus five. I know we're opposites there, Jim, but I like NC State. That's okay. It's not one of my best bets. I'm going to double up with Kai uh, on five with the Wolf Pack and then Oregon. The lay with Oregon minus, I'm sorry, plus one. It's a plus one circuit right now. So a courtesy. Have, have have one creative thought, Matt. That's all. You stole one from me and one from Kai. How dare you? Well, you guys are right. I'm just going to cherry pick the winners. I'm not trying to be creative here. It's about money. It's a bottom line business, Jimbo. Not an art all contest. Right. Come on. Come on. All right. All right. I accept uh, it. Uh, yeah, that's it. I'm not going to lock in a third one. There's not one I like enough. I don't want to force it. So yeah, Oregon money line for me, Kansas Sanford over despite Maddie's uh, shortcomings or, or worries with that. And guys, no that's official it, that play, up. Jim, in the future market. Sorry, I just want to be on record with that. You guys talked me out of the Midwest. Yes, no. So no official play for Matt on the Midwest futures. Okay. Sure. Well, that wraps it up for us here on the Thursday edition of our Best Bet Show. Uh, if you are just watching this later, you can check out the channel for the Friday Best Bet Show. We are actually about to record that live right now. Uh, but thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you in the other chats. We're just going to have to have you switch over. Um, let's do it. Let's get over there and, and 